the big strategies for success in photographing the kind of a lake, you think? Well, I think they're just sticking with the basics, paying close attention to the weather, trying to predict the light, scouting the area out, trying to find out where the most uh, opportunities are for mainly the bald cypress or the big draw. Trying to learn where the groves are and how to get there and when and what's the best light weather and conditions for shooting. I'm considering some of that stuff, but also I'm, I'm counting a lot on just dumb luck. Yeah, myself. Yeah, it's, it's always better to be lucky than good. So hopefully we'll uh, stumble on some, some good shots, some wall hangers. You know, if you, if you take enough photographs, there's a good chance you're going to end up with something like at the end. There you go. Uh, yeah. If you're looking for the real secret to success. That's it. Because you got to put yourself in a position to get a good picture and just get out there and make clicks and uh, think about composition and lighting. And, uh, usually some good things will happen with that. So there you go. So we're on our way now to try to find some breakfast out here close to Lake Caddo for our uh, fishing, our boating expedition this morning. It's kind of slim pickings out here. We'll see what we can find. Out here on Caddo Lake this morning, uh, Barry and Larry Armor Photography, and we're trying to out here capture some some photos of the, the, of the cypress trees and water here at first light. Uh, what's on your shot list for today, Larry? We well, you know, got uh, just trying to isolate some bold cypress here at the uh, Shady Glade. Marina. Got some fog out here this morning. And uh, later on, do some more scouting around the lake. Maybe try and look at the ammunition plant. We do have a, a boat uh, reserved with a guide for uh, 8 o'clock to go out and uh, take some photos for a while from that boat. So we're going to see how that turns out for us. Um, the main guy, the main thing we're trying to do today is out shoot photography wise. The couple of guys we watch on the internet a lot. A lot. What's the, what's the guy with a face like a bunch of Spanish moss? What's his name? Uh, Gavin McLeod. Uh, I mean Gavin Hardcastle. Okay, yeah, that, and then the other guy that's with him sometimes. Michael Shamblum. Michael Shamblum. So we, we feel like we're pretty, pretty qualified photographers. We know we look better, so uh, we're just going to see what we can do today. Uh, part of the ruins of what was the Longhorn Army ammunition uh, plant, uh, where they manufactured a lot of weaponry during World War II, and it was used for destruction of weapons uh, like uh, long-range missiles well, after the uh, Russian nuclear arms drawdown. With Bush and Gorbachev, Pershing missiles were brought here to be decommissioned and destroyed. Uh, but you know, it's it was, now. It was primarily built to be a dynamite plant, a TNT plant, uh, in the 40s, and it was shut down in 2006 and became part of the Cato Lake National Wildlife Refuge. It's an EPA Superfund site. Um, if you, if you like doing these kind of exploration shots of, uh, uh, you know, urban exploration, this kind of industrial uh, exploration, you know, these are, these are open in some parts of here still today, and it's a place to come in and get a lot of interesting photos uh, just to kind of show you a, a part of this one structure that's still available.
this facility was 8,000 acres. This plant, dynamite plant, was 8,000 acres. It had 451 buildings on it originally. So I'm not sure how many of those buildings are left, but obviously there's still some in ruin. So hopefully we'll get some good pictures from here, and uh, when we do, we'll post them and uh, add them to this video. But it definitely has a lot of possibilities, and uh, the, for whatever reason, they it looks like they tore down parts of it and left parts of it, and so it's it's this odd ruin of a place uh, It really is interesting. You know, where we've one brick wall has been replaced by a wall of trees now, and fascinating stuff. So we will post pictures and uh, let you know how it turned out. So this is another set of the uh, ruins, if you will, at the uh, Longhorn Army Ammunition Plant in what is now Caddo Lake Natural Wildlife Refuge. Uh, some pretty stuff here, pretty fun stuff to shoot here. A lot of a lot of it is surreal. Uh, you can't tell what it was, much less what it is. Uh, so there's, there's old buildings, there's parts of old arches that look like they could have been used for some kind of platform at some point or for pipe racks or who knows what. Uh, falling down walls, uh, you know, with uh, evidence of just lots and lots of mold and, uh, and green uh, algae and things that have accumulated over the years. Uh, all over the place you can see trees that have grown into the concrete and or, or broke over the concrete and fell over them so uh, really a lot of things to see here all right here we are we're headed back to home after our trip to the uh, Cattle Lake area we stayed at uh, Shady Grove Resort for a couple of nights and saw the sites on Caddo Lake and at the Caddo Lake National Wildlife Refuge. Specifically went there to see the Longhorn ammunition ruins and uh, headed back home now. Barry, what did you, uh, what did you think was going to be your most successful photo? Oh, I really enjoyed uh, photographing the, the bald cypress trees in Caddo Lake. I'm hopeful I got some good shots from that. It was, it was even more spectacular than I thought it would be, and, and I hope I was able to, uh, to get images that convey that. Uh, I, I really was uh, impressed with the Longhorn Army ammunition plant ruins because uh, I didn't have as high of expectations for those. and. Those are really very cool and surreal, and I'm hoping I've got uh, images from that that, that convey that amount of uh, unrealness and uh, you know, almost a post-apocalyptic uh, feel to it. Yeah, very surreal. So, uh, Any hits or misses on the trip itself, things you'd change if you're coming back, or recommendations? Uh, no, I was happy staying uh, in, in Shady Glade. RV resort, which is in Uncertain, Texas. Uh, even though there's not a lot around there, there's a couple of local dives you can eat at. And, and the, that location has its own marina that offers its own places to photograph from without ever leaving uh, the shoreline, just being on their pier and, and on their docks and looking out at the lake. Uh, it made it not necessary to, to rent a boat to get uh, nice shots of uh, the bald cypress trees and some boat houses and things like that. It's also very convenient to Karnak, Texas, which is where that uh, Caddo Lake National Wildlife Refuge is. So it's a short trip to go there and photograph the uh, Army Munitions Plant Ruins as well. So uh, overall, I'd say it's a highly successful trip. Uh, we had good weather 
uh, which was a mix of clouds and sun, mostly cloudy, I would say, which I like because it gives you softer images and you're not fighting with contrast all the time. Uh, what, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Uh, I'd say as far as hits goes that the, uh, that the, the Shady, Shady Glade Resort is, uh, it was a hit. It was clean and uh, well managed and I, I would recommend it for for folks who would be uh, a candidate to for a repeat visit. Uh, the Cattle Lake area itself, the uh, bald cypress and, and the lakes and the structures and uh, boat houses and things were very interesting and fun to shoot. The ammunition dump also was a big hit for me. I liked it a lot. I guess one of the misses would be the state park, Cattle Lake State Park. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but it wasn't to me anything that stood out about it. If I was planning another return trip to uh, Cattle Lake, I don't know if I would take the time to, to go by that one, unless that's one of your one of your things. If you like to visit the state parks, to, to check them off and maybe to stay there for the amenities that you're used to. And, by all means do it, but for me it's something I'd probably, I'd probably pass on. But overall, a good trip. So we already kind of talked off camera about if we wanted to come back to this area of, of Cattle Lake, that we, the thing we might do differently is pick a November trip uh, so we get fall colors. Uh, right now it's the end of April, early May, so we're kind of in, in spring. and. Uh, the report was that in November this year, the colors of the bald cypress were really spectacular and it was a, a, definitely a good time to be there. So on a, on a return trip, I think a, a good goal would be to try to get some of that uh, action if we could. And also another benefit to that would be that in the uh, inside the National Wildlife Refuge, there are some roads that are only accessible on the last quarter of the year. So if you came back at that time, you'd not only maybe time it right to get the, the fall foliage, but also get access to more of the reserve than you do at other times. So thinking that would probably, probably be the, the, a good suggestion. Best time to go. So uh, keep watching uh, this video, and at, at the end of it, we're gonna post some of our favorite pictures that we took from this trip. And I uh, hope you'll look at those. And if you like this video, uh, leave us a comment and encourage us to, to do more. And we'll, we'll find some other place to go and some, some other shots to take to, uh, to keep this rolling.